Hey, I'm Arcee and this is the second episode about making a multiplayer game with Node.js. So if you haven't watched the first episode, then I will highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in this episode, what I will be covering is uh, WebSocket communication, and this will be the main uh, way that we will transmit message from the client to the server and from the server to the client. However, before getting into that, I want to do a little recap about anonymous function in JavaScript. So let's say we got this. So a equal one, then we call the function with the parameter a. So this is equivalent to just calling my func with uh, one as a parameter. Now, one thing you can do in JavaScript is that a variable can also be a function. For example, a equal that function, and then you call the function with a as a parameter. Now, one thing you can do is um, like here, you rechange the one for a function, and here we can also do this. So my func and then the first parameter is a function. So we will use this syntax very, very often when coding um, communication on the server. Okay, so now about WebSocket, what you need to um, do first is to install the WebSocket library socket.io. So as usual, it's npm install socket.io. So you open the command line, go to the root of your project like I showed in the last episode, and then you simply type um, the command and this will install socket.io on your project. Okay, so this is our project right now. So on the left side, it's our app.js where we initialize the server. And on the right side, it's our index file where we um, display anything we want to display to the client. So the app.js file and inside the client, the index.html5 I'm talking about. So in order to use socket IO, this is what we will need to type. So this over there on the server and this over there on the client. So um, that line, you don't really need to understand what it does. It just loads the, the file and then initialize it. And it returns an object, the IO object that has all the functionalities of the socket IO library. And on the, um, the client, what we do is that we request a certain file. Um, and then we initialize a connection. So this over there initialize a connection, a WebSocket connection between the client and the server. Now that function over here, this over there, what it does is that whenever there is a connection, this function will be called. So right now what happens is if a player connects to, um, to the server, this function will be called and there should be a message saying socket connection. So let's go and test what we have written. So just save both of them, go over here, type not app.js. As usual, it should say server started um, right here. And if you open Google Chrome, and you go to local OS 2000, um, it should say hello world and also connect to the server. And if we check here, it should say socket connection. And if we refresh the page, it should say socket connection once again. So every time this over here is called, so when a new client uh, arrives, that function will be called. And yeah, so yeah, obviously we can do more than just that. So socket IO is split in two parts. There's the listening and then there's the emitting. So you can emit a certain type of message and in the other end, you can listen to a certain type of message. So let, let, let's just do a little example. So on the client, right after connecting um, to the server, I'm going to emit appy. So this is the um, type of message. I'm sending an appy message. And on the server, what I can do is I can listen to the appy message. And this is done with socket.on. So whenever there's an appy message, that function will be called and it's going to console log appy. So let's just save and test this. There we go. Log into the game and over here we should see Appy. So one thing we can also do when emitting messages is to um, add data to it. So Appy is the type of message and it can have data, for example, an object called reason and the reason is my birthday. And on the server, this function over there actually takes a parameter called data. So this is the first parameter and data will be the same than whatever data the, the client sends us. So this over there will go inside our data so we can access the property. For example, appy because data.reason. 
So if we save that and reset the server, then we should see Appy because it's my birthday. So now one thing to understand is that it works both way. Right now the client sends a message, but it can also be the opposite. So a server sends a message, for example, emit server message with this data and on the client, we got this. So the client listened to any package that starts with um, server message and it will console log the data message. So if we save that and reset the server, there we go. And I connect, and I go in the console log, I should see hello, that was sent from the server. Another thing you can do is instead of emitting the API right after connecting, we can um, do it under certain condition. So let's say I create a function called API over here. So if I don't call API, nothing happens. If I call API, then it's going to emit the package. And what I will do is I will create a button over here with HTML. So when you click on the button API, it's going to call the API function and it's going to emit this. So if we save, go back here. So right now on the server, there is nothing. There's just um, socket connection done. And if I click API, then it's going to send the package and the server will receive it. Now, another thing to understand is that it also works with multiple clients. So let's say I got a random variable over here. Um, so it's random. And the reason why you are happy depends on that random variable. So in theory, every people should have a different reason to be happy. So if I reset the server and I connect with um, the first guy and I click happy, it should say happy 41. And if I connect with another tab, and I click happy, it should say, hey, I'm happy, but with 57 instead. So I guess that's pretty much it about this video. Hope you liked it. And don't forget to click the annotation on the screen to go check out the next episode. So what I'm planning to cover is communication between different clients. So having a list of socket and the action of one player can impact the other players that are connected. So that's what I'm planning to cover. So thanks again for watching and see ya.